Hello, I'm Nick Hodgson, and I am the owner-operator for AstroGems.com, and AstroGems.com has been involved with the mitigation of karma and has a particular interest in remedial um, influences to overcome negative karma through Vedic astrology, as well as predictive astrology. In other words, we want to know what's happening in the future, and we want to be able to opportunistically benefit by knowing that information. Years ago, I had a very interesting experience. It was over 30 years ago, I had a very competent Vedic astrologer give me a reading, and he indicated that it was in November of that year, for two weeks, that I had a particularly negative occurrence likely to occur in my house of transport. And so you know, I told him, well, what can I practically do about this? And he made a suggestion, well, you could you know, double your insurance if you're traveling or something along those lines. So what I did actually do was I fully comprehensively insured my vehicle, my car. And at the time, that was very uncharacteristic. It's the first time I ever did it because, I, you know, I lived on a fairly uh, healthy budget, shall we say. And ha having full coverage wasn't something that I normally did. So anyway, I did that. As it turned out, that particular period, I was traveling to England. And I was away from home, away from Encinitas, California. And I lent the car to my friend. And he parked it outside my house on the street. And a drunk driver came careening around the corner and totaled all four panels down one side, literally from the, the back to the front of the parked vehicle, and then tried to take off, but someone saw him and he got caught. And he had no financial wherewithal. He didn't have a driver's license. He was just a, you know, an alcoholic, basically. And so that happened exactly in that period of November, uh, during that two-week window. And so that really got my attention. That really gave me even more added respect to Vedic astrology. And so I went to the insurance company and we got several quotes. It was around $4,000 repair bill. I said to Farmers Insurance, um, give me a $3,000 check and I'll, I'll fix it myself. And they were delighted with that concept. So they, they wrote out a check pretty quickly and handed it to me. I remember... Uh, that experience quite humorously. And so then I got the car fixed in Mexico, Tijuana, for about $600 and pocketed the change. And it was a very beneficial way of taking advantage opportunistically of seeing ahead of time that potential negative karma. Now what that does is that brings me up to the subject at hand. I have a keen interest for some reason in eclipses. I'm not a professional astrologer. I'm very um, preferential to astrology that has the ability to give predictive information. And I tuned into things that Shakespeare has said that the Bible says about eclipses and, you know, astrology. And so there's been many many eclipses in the last 30 years, and I haven't really taken much notice of them. I've looked at a few, you know, the, the scenarios of the planetary positions around them, but they haven't really grabbed my attention. This time, it's completely different, completely different. And so I want to get into explaining some of the astrological aspects of the solar eclipse coming in August 21st, touching on a little bit the partial lunar eclipse over Asia, North Korea, China, Australia, India in August 7th, two weeks earlier, which might have a relationship of amplitude on the August 21st solar one. That's up for debate. Because it's hitting so close to home, it's only covering America. It needs to be uh, considered very judiciously and in a way that would require preparation uh, at the personal home front level. I would just like to back up a little bit. I have a lot of respect for William Shakespeare. And in his plays and sonnets, he wrote about uh, eclipses being extremely negative events, 
potentially. And, of course, in Elizabethan England at that time, they probably weren't very aware of the lunar eclipses or the partial eclipses, and but only seemed to be aware of the total or near-total solar eclipses that would um, cast a dark shadow over the land. And historians at that time, etc., would be you know, very wary of negative events coming after those eclipses. So there's a part of King Lear where the Earl of Gloucester broaches the subject of eclipses. And um, this is what he says. These late eclipses in the sun and moon pretend no good to us, though the wisdom of nature can reason it thus and thus, yet nature itself, scourged by the sequent events, love cools, friendship falls off, brothers divide, in cities mutinies, in countries discord, in palaces treason, and the bond crack twixt son and father. This villain of mine comes under the prediction, there's son against father, the king falls from bias of nature. There's father against child, we have seen the best of our time, machinations, hollowness, treachery, and all ruinous disorders follow us disquietly to our graves. Here the Earl of Gloucester demonstrates his understanding and respect for astrology. An eclipse is a rare occurrence and one of the most powerful and ominous events in astrology. It portends conflict, upheaval, and drastic, usually painful change. Where a total solar eclipse can be seen, an entire establishment can be violently supplanted by a new order if conditions are right in the astrological charts of the ruling figures. Gloucester associates the troubles and intrigue in Lear's realm to the recent eclipses there. The Bible itself endorses the signs of the stars, the constellations. And to support this, I'll just read a couple of parts from the Bible. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon, in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts falling from for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Luke chapter 21 verse 25 to 27 and there's another part from Genesis chapter 1 4 15 and God said let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark seasons and days and years and let them be lights in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth and it was so and let them serve as signs to mark seasons and days and years. And then in Job it says, Can you bring forth the Maseroth, which is in Hebrew for the Zodiac, in their seasons, or lead us out the bear with its cubs, an astrological constellation? Job chapter 38, 32. The first total solar eclipse to appear in America in 26 years is going to occur, as I mentioned earlier, on August 21st, 2017. It's 99 years since one has been accessible to Americans from coast to coast and it will be in an arc from Northern Oregon to North Carolina. It is also the first total solar eclipse that is only visible to America, no other nation, since before the nation's birth in 1776. That's of particular interest because it's literally bullseyeing one nation. It's not sharing astrological indicators with any other nation. It's an event that um, if it didn't have malefic planets strongly associated with it, I wouldn't be doing this talk. The question mark surrounds a little bit about what is America's natal chart. And for that, I've been advised to follow Yogi Carve's chart for America. There are some other similar charts. America essentially was born July 4th, 1776 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And in an undetermined time, leaves it open to some speculation interpretation. But the birth time 
either yields Leo or Sagittarius rising, with an ascendant of 29 degrees in Leo or alternatively Sagittarius rising. Two degrees moon in Aquarius or alternatively six degrees in Aquarius. So Sagittarius rising or Capricorn moon with Gemini rising on some earlier ascendant. So essentially you have a algorithm you can evaluate looking at the chart for America and tying it in to planetary positions with this eclipse. And if there weren't so many negatives, again, I wouldn't be urging people to judiciously prepare for the aftermath of this event. This is essentially the message of this talk. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the full solar eclipse that's going to occur to America in August. And it's preceded, as I said, by a partial lunar eclipse. This lunar eclipse is tightly opposed by Mars, 4 degrees, and tightly aspected by Saturn, 6 degrees, and close to conjunct K2. This makes it malefic for either natal chart. And Mars is obviously a ruthless, warlike, angry planet when debilitated, when weakened, when malefically placed. It can be courageous and brave and enduring in its positive aspects, but all these aspects are in the, the negative uh, relationship. Saturn is a cleansing, removing, purifying with pain related planet. And K2 can be explosive and sudden. So to have those three things during a lunar eclipse is definitely malefic. However, it's only a partial lunar eclipse. So its relationship, its impact over America isn't going to be as strong. However, you could consider it to be a precursor, laying the foundation, laying the groundwork, laying, it's kind of like a sneeze before the cold, maybe an infection before a fever prior to the solar eclipse. The solar eclipse is nearly conjunct Mars, conjunct K2, and loosely squared by Saturn, and this is also extremely malefic in a chart. The solar eclipse is opposite America's moon in the Carver chart, and is loosely conjunct America's ascendant in that chart. America's ascendant is also squared by Saturn during this time in the Carve chart, Yogi Carve chart. In addition to both of America's possible charts, America's Mars is opposed by Saturn, conjuncted by Mars, and continues to be tightly aspected by Saturn during both the eclipses. In both eclipses, K2 is right on the cusp of Aquarius and Capricorn, which is near America's moon. Just how near depends on which chart you use. As I said earlier, there's some discussion about what America's true natal chart is, but um, it's somewhere in that area. In both eclipses, Rahu is close to America's sun. Now, add that to the fact that we're in a Rahu Dasha. America is in this long Rahu Dasha, which is a fairly compulsive and kind of out of control type of planet. It's not a planet, of course, it's an invisible planetary energy field pertaining to the node of the moon. But with the Sagittarius rising chart, the solar eclipses very closely oppose America's moon. In either chart, the moon rules malefic houses, either the 12th or 8th house. So no matter which chart you subscribe to, America has a very, very malefic overview. The partial lunar eclipse is relatively malefic. Nothing that would get me up and do this talk about but coupled with or reinforcing the solar total solar eclipse that really means we should be getting organized to prepare for the worst it looks like there's going to be a negative event following the second eclipse the solar eclipse and often in history massive earthquakes or wars have proceeded after a extreme eclipse. You have to look at the news and go, well, what could happen right now? And if you do that, obviously we're playing with fire by challenging North Korea. I'm not saying there isn't good reason to be 
irritated with North Korea, but it's nonetheless a situation that politically should be trodden very, very, very carefully. I have to think of one thing about North Korea, and that is that they, I read that they have two satellites over America at the moment. Yes, Korea, North Korea has satellite technology and can launch them. And that the trajectory of a satellite is very different to that of a missile and that you can drop a nuclear device from a satellite and set it off above the surface of America. About 72 miles is the right height to create an electromagnetic pulse which would wipe out, short circuit essentially, all the major electrical systems uh, in that part of America. When you look at a country's birth chart, you also have to look at the leaders that run those different countries and they also blend those two charts together. So in this case it would be the President of America and President of North Korea, neither of which are looking particularly good. Kim Son Yong is showing a lot of violence in his chart, a lot of unpredictability. And being in an 18-year Rahu Dasha is a dubious time to be flexing one's military muscles. Rahu, Ketu, Mars and Saturn have the ability to probably deliver the worst types of karma, uh, I should say karmic return, to any individual or country. It's a very complex subject. I've been online and looked at what lots of different astrologers have said about the solar eclipse and I haven't found much information to endorse what I'm saying so let's hope I'm completely wrong. I do have some astrology friends who are very keyed into what I'm discussing and think I'm on the same track as them. I'm not trying to pretend that this idea has come from me specifically. I'm just embellishing and advertising this information so that people can look at preparing. And when I say preparing, I'm talking about getting a good three-month stockpile of food, being able to live off-grid. Yogananda indicated that we will be going back to the land far more in the future than we realize. You know, the big problem in August with Kim's natal Mars in his chart, the, that's the pre North Korean president, it's the planet of aggression, Mars, anger and violence, among other things. His Mars is being aspected by Saturn in his chart and Ketu. And so there's a lot of polarity between his chart and this solar eclipse. And it's becoming especially tight around the second eclipse and still building for a few days after that. On August 27th, Mars is in the sky, is exactly opposite his natal Mars, while Ketu is virtually exactly conjunct his Mars. The Saturn aspects his Mars to within three degrees, and this amounts to a very intense triple teaming by the malefics on his Mars, which is exponentially worse than the effect of any one malefic by itself. Just as three bullies ganging together are exponentially worse than those same bullies taken individually, it is very hard to control one's anger and aggression during such an astrological combination. And good judgment is extremely elusive in such periods. A sudden release of frustration and anger is a common human response to the kind of astrology that Kim has around August 27th. We should watch the political scene carefully as August approaches to get a sense of whom he might lash out at and how. My personal feeling is if he lashes out at America, China might actually step back if he can prove to them that he's got a button he can press that is related to atomic energy. There's so much Vedic astrology surrounding Trump and Kim and America's natal chart that one looks for the good at this particular time and it's so overwhelmed by the negative that we should embrace the potential scenario. It could be one of many things. It can be a massive earthquake. It could be an earthquake triggering a much greater volcano than Mount St. Helens. It could be a collapse of the financial system. At the beginning of the Saturn period when the internet started, we're coming full circle with that Saturn cycle and so it looks like it could be something affecting telecommunications.
The eclipse lasts for about a minute, 58 seconds. The umbral cone covers an area about 70 miles wide, goes from Depot Bay in Oregon all the way to Charleston in North Carolina, and travel, it travels in a west-east trajectory. I've spoken to friends who have witnessed eclipses and said it was the stupidest thing they've done in their life, that their following year was incredibly negative for them. I've written a page on my website about advice from different Indian saints advising people not to go out during eclipses, to cover the food, to not eat during an eclipse, to pray and meditate during the eclipse, to draw the curtains and not allow any light in if it's a solar one or even a lunar one, and even try to stay indoors preceding and after it by a good six or eight hours. I know personally... I will not be having my businesses open that day. My employees will be staying at home and doing what they feel is the judicious thing. And they definitely won't be going out and watching it because they've got so much anecdotal information on how extremely negative this vibration of event is. Nikolai Tesla said, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And that's exactly what I'm talking about with this partial lunar and full solar eclipse. And then he also said, my brain is only a receiver in the universe. There is a core from which we obtain knowledge, strength, and inspiration. Well, we're, we're so completely intertwined and interlocked with our outer cosmos and yet we're so separated in our dualistic nature that we're completely at a loss to recognize the potency of significant astrological events. Perhaps this talk and the consequent historic prospective events that are going to occur shortly after the eclipse in August will validate a change in the, one's personal paradigm to a greater degree in thinking about caring for mother nature in thinking about trying to lessen global warming in our personal lives prepare to be off grid prepare to live off grid get a veggie garden get fertilizer get a compost pile going uh, plant fruit trees store dehydrated foods uh, Maybe dig holes and bury them so they're out of sight, out of mind. Get some nutrition for your neighbours. Team together. Study self-sufficiency in all its many forms. If a cell phone doesn't work, it's still a great camera and tool. And I think at the end of the day, if you can just take to mind that this is an extraordinarily negative astrological event, Saturn retrograde, which is probably the biggest karmic the influencing planet. There are so many indicators of the need for self-restraint and the need to avoid going out in it. And so many people, and as I've said earlier, I can't stress this enough, who've looked at eclipses have said it was the worst thing they ever did. And then there's other people who've looked at them and can't wait to the next one. But that's there's always anomalies to every rule, and it's up to your intuition to decide what course you're going to take. Paramahansa Yogananda, Swami Shivananda, Karuna Mai Ma, a great saint called Mata Amritananda Mai or Ama, all advise strongly about going out in an eclipse and looking at it. They all say stay indoors. They all say try not to eat during the eclipse and to... in Increase greatly your sadhana, your spiritual practices before and after to lessen some of its impact on your personal karmic pattern. Thanks very much for listening. Um, here's a beautiful veggie garden that I love to work with. Um, we really do need to get more in touch with nature and the noble art of growing food is something that will be embraced greatly should there be a economic catastrophe in America. I'd like to point out that it could be a terrorist event. It could be um, a host of 
sudden types of karmic development. It's definitely not focusing on North Korea necessarily. Um, I will be doing a solar eclipse Facebook page, uh, following on on some more information surrounding this subject. I would like to draw attention also to another Facebook page that I have that is called Solar Storm Awareness. And this is another type of phenomenon that inevitably will be creating an EMP, an electromagnetic pulse, on the electric grid, which is another reason why I believe everyone within reason should have the ability to live independently of the grid as a backup plan to their comfortable survival. I, I think it's only judicious to have practical insurance. Uh, trust me, if you have an insurance policy and this type of event goes down, all the money you put into it could be worthless. So with that in mind, thanks very much for your time. <laughs>